A very good morning all. I'm Aditi Lama with the Sunday edition of South Asian News, Vision of Asia. We are coming to you from our studio in New York City. Welcome to the show, where we bring you top picks of the week. Starting the show, we'd like to wish all our viewers and supporters of ITV Gold a very happy 4th of July. Also known as Independence Day, 4th of July celebrates the Declaration of Independence of the United States on July 4th, 1776. The Continental Congress then declared that the 13 American colonies were no longer under the monarch of Britain and were united, free and independent states. This occasion today was marked by many festivities such as fireworks and parades and much more and also celebrated 158 million Americans fully vaccinated in the country. On COVID-19 updates, big news came from the World Health Organization which urged fully vaccinated individuals to still wear a mask indoors and practice social distancing splitting from the CDC's decision to allow fully vaccinated people to shed their mask indoor. This comes as several states in the Midwest and South are showing low vaccination rates, worrying experts of another surge of COVID-19 amidst the Delta variant of the coronavirus. So again, if you haven't received your vaccine, please visit vaccine.gov to find more information and register. With that, it's now time to begin today's South Asian news segment, Topics of the Week, and take a look at the headlines. Indian Consulate and International Himsa Foundation celebrate Marvi Janti in New York City. This week, Padam Shri Dr. Sudhir Prarik, New Jersey. ITV Gold Shiva Prakash Vinod passes away. The Culture Tree and India Center Foundation hosts Color for India fundraiser Hudson Yats, New York City. Edison Community Vaccine Health Group assists seniors with COVID-19 vaccine appointments, New Jersey. No Time to Die, James Bond movie set to release October 8, 2021. It's time for a short break. Stay with us on the Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Aditi Lama and this is Vision of Asia, Topics of the Week of South Asian News. Let's take a look at the International Ahimsa Foundation, which spreads the message of non-violence and peace from Jain principles. Recently, the International Ahimsa Foundation, in collaboration with the Indian Consulate in New York, celebrated Mahavir Janti, Lord Mahavir's birth anniversary of the consulate's premises. Lord Babir was the 24th and last spiritual leader of the Jain religion. The event saw many members and supporters of the International Himsa Foundation along with community leaders, Consul General Dhir Jaiswal and special guests of honor, Congresswoman Carol Maloney. Here are some highlights. here today to celebrate nonviolence uh, and to remember the incredible leadership of Gandhi. I am Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney and I represent the consulate and I'm here celebrating with the Consulate General of India. We are working to get vaccines to our ally India and that help. But also by August 15th, 2022 will be the 75th anniversary of Indian independence. So we need to pass the Congressional Gold Medal honoring Gandhi, Nelson Mandela from South Africa, and Martin Luther King from America have both received it. They both said they were led by Gandhi in their leadership. So it's long past due to honor one of the greatest leaders in history, India's Gandhi. My warm greetings to all of you from the Indian Consulate. We are here with the Ahimsa Foundation celebrating our civilizational wealth, our values of Ahimsa, of nonviolence, which has been part and parcel of Indian life for centuries and for millennia. May Ahimsa, may nonviolence, may our civilizational values 
bring joy and happiness in our lives today and always. Thank you. Hi, I am Dr. Neeta Jain, founder and president of International Ahimsa Foundation. We are at the Indian Consulate in New York here today, celebrated Lord Mahavir's birth anniversary of 2,620 years, who gave a message of non-violence and peace to this world and live and let live, which is more relevant in today's world than ever. Due to this coronavirus pandemic, we learned how to respect each other. We learn how to accept each other. We learn how to live with each other. And that is the message we celebrated today from Mahavi to Mahatma. Mahatma Gandhi was a big uh, follower of Jain, Prince, Jain principles. By the way, his mother was a Jain lady and he adopted non-violence in his political and in his social life. And he ran the movement of Ahimsa efforts of the International Ahimsa Foundation as well as the Consulate General of India in promoting uh, the values which Lord Mahavira uh, stood for. The core principles of Jainism were discussed. Uh, there has been a, a enthusiastic participation also from a large number of guests who came and heard the speakers. Uh, we hope that this, this event will go a long way in uh, further taking out and uh, spreading the message of Lord Mahavira and Janijam. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shanu Jain. I'm the member of International Ahinsa Foundation. I have been working with Dr. Jain since many years. Uh, she coordinates these kind of events like two to three times a year. And she not only involves the adults, but also the kids. Uh, I remember going to the UN schools with her uh, to teach the kids non-violence as an uh, after school class. Uh, she tries to like, uh, not only like uh, practice non-violence in your speech, but also in your actions. Um, Dr. Neeta Jain, she has really, really worked hard for this community like uh, sending the message out mm, to everybody, to the world on non-violence and peace. Uh, and I really look forward to having more such events with her and with everybody here. Thank you. Jai Jinendra, myself Nitin Ajmera. I'm the chairperson of the Parliament of World Religions. Um, I'm here uh, for this Ahinsa Day Foundation uh, celebration of Mahavir Jan Makalyanak. It was a beautiful event, and um, uh, as a chairperson of the Parliament of World Religions, it is my honor to um, see that we are carrying forward the messages of Mahatma Gandhi, of Mahavir Bhagwan, of Nelson Mandela, of um, Martin Luther King. And in f fall of this year, in October, we are organizing a virtual convention, and we invite all of you to talk about compassion, healing, and action. That is our theme, and uh, we are looking forward to having all of you. And I welcome everyone who is present here to please come and join us in the convention. It was a great event. It's great to be here, uh, along with uh, Nita Jane and the Council General and all of the distinguished individuals that uh, celebrated the history and the culture uh, that goes back to the sixth century. Uh, dealing with nonviolence uh, and understanding the connection between uh, the historic uh, uh, times of uh, Mr. Hav Mahav Mahava and uh, Mr. Um, Gandhi, uh, connecting with Dr. King and Mr. Mandela, uh, bringing it on up today. It is what a message, what the world needs to hear today. It would help solve a lot of our problems. So I'm delighted to be here with some great people that um, has made a lot of contributions to the United States of America. Jai Jinendra, my name is Ritesh Shah. I'm a Jain president of Jain Center of America, New York. Uh, it was very nice uh, to invite us today uh, for uh, Mahavi Janma Kalyanak Mahosav. And it was very, very well and nice, ni nice performance for uh, International Ahimsa Foundation. Thank you, Nitaji, for inviting us today. Uh, and thank you. I feel honored to be able to be part of this important event, not only recognizing the important teachings that are still in, at the center of debates and at the center of education today, the teachings of Mahavir, but to also support the wonderful work done by the International Ahimsa Foundation 
and all the partners. I feel like they're doing something that will be helpful to children, especially those vulnerable children around the world. And I hope that we can, my wife and I and our friends and family can be a part of this. We're honored to be here, Jay Janan. We now have a segment of ITV Goals this week with Padma Shri, Dr. Sudhir Parikh. Reflecting on major news of the week in both politics and coronavirus, this week with Padma Shri, Dr. Sudhir Parikh features his opinions and advice for South Asian American population. Dr. Parikh is also the chairman of ITV Go Parikh by Media and successfully runs a chain of clinics across New York, New Jersey, catering to all healthcare needs and resources for South Asians. Hence, he brings in a great amount of knowledge and perspective on all that's happening this week. In this segment, Padma Shri Dr. Sudhir Parikh discusses much on the building collapse in Surfside, Florida and COVID-19 updates in India. And now, time for weekly show with a passionate India lover, chairman of ITV Gold and Parikh Worldwide Media. Get ready for loving sharing from physician, philanthropist, publisher and India advocate in this week. Namaskar. Our show Gyal and I have the pleasure of welcoming Padmashri Dr. Sudhir Parikh for this special weekly edition. Uh, Namaskar Rakh Sahib, Swagat Hai Aapka. Namaskar, Namaskar. And today I want to begin uh, with uh, one uh, event that is drawing our attention which is uh, shocking also in one way, the collapse of a uh, 40-story building in Miami and President is also likely to visit that. Uh, it is near the sea beach. Uh, your uh, first response in terms of what you thought, this is something uh, that we haven't heard in years, actually. Well, I mean, this is very shocking and uh, very unfortunate and very, 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 uh, very, very uh, unacceptable uh, happening would happen which uh, led to this kind of collapse of the building and particularly in the USA. Because in USA, we know that there are quite a few uh, rules and regulations on the property, on the building, construction, building uh, inspection and so forth. And this building somehow uh, had some inf inspection, what I understand a few years ago, uh, the inspector uh, commented some deficit in the construction and obviously nobody took care of that and this happened. So I think whoever is responsible of negligence, uh, whether it's a builder, it's a owner or, or, or whoever is, should be investigated, should be prosecuted and should be come to uh, bring to some accountability. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, for recertification, uh, there was uh one uh, repair work in process probably with 50 million dollars of uh, investment required to repair and maybe they were going back and forth or but overall things are uh, as you said unacceptable and shocking both this would uh, make people across the world including india think again about how the high story buildings or skyscrapers uh, near uh, the uh, uh, sea, actually, there are many cities like that in India also, Mumbai. Do you see that uh, it calls for some additional alertness and some <laughs> lessons uh, that needs to be learned, uh, taking into account what happened in Miami? Obviously, I mean, lesson to be learned because always land around the sea area is always a little softer. And um, so, but there are enough rules and regulations or engineering uh, uh, kind of um, uh, ability uh, to uh, overcome all those things. Uh, only thing is that uh, um, builder has to stick with the uh, plan, um, blueprint. <clears throat> they should do the, all the necessary work and all the work has to be inspected at every steps. And again, uh, when, uh, once building is done and people are living there, still it should be inspected once uh, so often, once a year, once every other year. And uh, if there is any deficit or uh, defect, should be corrected. And uh, doesn't matter how much it costs, because uh, here the cost is not only money part, but cost of is cost of the lives lost. So uh, uh, all the correction has to be done. 
and if someone has ignored that correction or has not done in spite of the telling them then i think um, that person has to be uh, uh, hold uh, i mean held responsible for that uh, negligence absolutely and now talking about the indo us relationship uh, in this context uh, the latest development uh, with the appointment of atul keshav as uh, charge the affair a new interim envoy of usa in india uh, he is a career diplomat and of course uh, comes from uh, indian uh, roots how do you see uh, this idea of uh, america sending an indian indian american as its um, envoy to india well i i think is a is a it shows that our uh, indian americans are arrived has importance in the uh, uh, so, uh, american society and we have, we have a lot of impact on the american uh, politics and the selection of uh, this kind of selection always uh, makes you feel proud as well as satisfied let me uh, just venture into a little bit of psychological thinking so as you are also aware and you have been instrumental in forming indian caucus uh, you have worked uh, tirelessly uh, in the initial phase especially when uh, there was need for uh, building bridges between india and america on uh, several levels so you are uh, you are in love with uh, the country in which you are born and you are an american also so as an envoy when Uh, let's say atul keshab uh, is uh, posted in india indian uh, indians would have some additional expectation from him uh, do you do you think that um, would obstruct uh, his uh, discharging of his duties in fair manner or it helps i think uh, at this that level of uh, diplo- diplomatic level uh anyone who gets appointed whether uh, they, they are uh, indian descent or uh, an american citizens i think uh, their judgment should not be uh, get clouded uh, one way or other and they should be very fair a uh, very objective uh, and and a uh, kind of uh, judgment has to be very clear and so i don't think that plays any much role in it even though he is a uh, indian descent doesn't mean that everything he or he should twist the thing towards the uh, benefit of the india he should do whatever is good for uh, uh, usa and first usa and then india so he has to have loyalty towards usa uh, to start with absolutely absolutely and i think uh, in some way it helps him uh, being aware of the way indian system functions maybe uh, work uh, in a better way for america also but now moving towards uh, the importance of communication as well as initiatives to bring people together prime minister narendra modi called for a meeting of jammu kashmir uh, political leaders uh, which was uh, very much um, talked about and some people were apprehensive as to what would be the result etc so now we know what transpired but before going to the meeting when you heard about this initiative uh, what was your uh, take uh, you looked at it with hope uh, and something necessary or was it like backtracking on abrogation of free 70 in some way no i think it's a, it's a progressive thing a proactive thing and the whole idea uh, behind that talk is the pr- prime minister wants to now move forward after two years of uh, um, removing of the 370 he wants to make as he promised before jammu and kashmir uh, a state uh, or give them statehood so they can function more democratic way they can have more rights more uh, ability to uh, govern themselves and therefore i think the uh, whole thing was very serious and prime minister wanted to move forward uh, with uh, so there is now there is no question of going back back on 370 that's done now is question whether to keep the jammu and kashmir as a union territory or uh, make them uh, give them statehood i think uh, to giving statehood is a, is a very desirable way of uh, uh, entertaining and engaging uh, those population 
Absolutely. And I think he uh, shared the roadmap of reaching to that destination uh, uh, and talked about the process of demarking of the constituencies before holding elections, because which was overdue. And uh, he clearly uh, said that there's no question of going back on uh, 370, as well as no uh, question of talking to Pakistan. Um, but right after this, uh, as you uh, have seen, there has been one drone attack at uh, Indian uh, Air Force um, Jammu um, Airport. And uh, this is the first uh, of its kind where unmanned uh, uh, sort of explosives uh, were um, uh, used. Uh, do you see these correlated uh, acts as well as... Uh, there has been a high-level meeting between Prime Minister, Home Minister, Defence Minister, and Defence Advisor uh, on uh, uh, analysing uh, this uh, development. Your take on uh, well, well, this incident, what happened is kind of unacceptable, and we have to be very concerned about it because even though it's a small event, no damage is done. But now it's a new war warfare started, uh, particularly from the remoteless warfare we are warfare without involving the human human being and and that could be a very dangerous warfare and i think uh, india should be alert should uh, develop certain anti um, uh, anti missile or anti drone um, uh, active uh, arrangement so they can check this uh, this kind of uh, uh, terrorism or this kind of uh, interference on the other country. Absolutely. And as we move towards uh, concluding part of our conversation, uh, I want to bring uh, to the attention of our viewers and uh, then I'll seek your input. Uh, there are many uh, compassionate Indian Americans who tirelessly work towards uh, some of the other project and you have also helped many and recently uh, you were instrumental in helping one Pratna Foundation raise funds for Khichdi Rath you must be aware that they um, succeeded in raising $16,000. And so the, um, the process of uh, reaching out to hunger people with food continues. Uh, so talk to me about uh, this um, active uh, participation of Indian Americans in solving uh, some of the problems uh, with compassion. Well, I mean, it's a it's a very commanding and very kudos to all the Indian American those who participated in this kind of activity. It's a great novel cross uh, to promote, and uh, I think uh, we should do all this thing. Uh, we should encourage them, and we should uh, do more and more to help the community and uh, and and bring the awareness in the community. Absolutely, and media also plays its. Uh role in uh, making that happen and as uh, we conclude uh, any uh, development that you are aware of in terms of the investigation regarding the origin of covid as america is also emphasizing and do you see that we will ever reach to any conclusive uh, uh, sort of a point of origin for covid well, right now, I think uh, we have not reached any conclusion. Obviously, whenever there, this kind of uh, personal to personal interaction is, uh, we always hopeful, and we believe that something good will come out, and uh, I'm sure it will. So let's hope for best and uh, wait for uh, a good thing to come out. Absolutely. And your concluding remarks from today's show, uh, Dr. Sujit Parikh. Well, I mean, uh, today's show, uh, uh, I would again say, uh, tell my friends that get vaccinated. Vaccines are very safe, will protect you from hospitalization and dying. And therefore, it's very important to every, each, every, each, each and everyone should get vaccinated. And now vaccinated is free. Uh, it is easily accessible to all the uh, brothers and sisters. And uh, one can uh, uh, use a whole uh, uh, corporate uh, New York City corporations uh, um, uh, out. I mean, initiative make use of it and get vaccinated. And uh, 
your greetings uh, for um, Indian Americans and, always have been. Yes, yes. And uh, I would like to thank you um, for joining us this week. Hopefully, we'll see you next week. Till then, God bless America, God bless India, and God bless Indian American brothers and sisters. Thank you. And welcome back. I'm Aditi Lama, and this is Vision of Asia South Asian News segment, Topics of the Week. We now have a sad news coming in from ITV Gold family. Mr. Shiva Prakash Banad passed away on June 24, 2021. Mr. Shiva Prakash Banad was an engineer by education and dedicated more than 40 years to television broadcasting alongside his brother, late Dr. B. N. Vishwanath and sister-in-law, Satya Vishwanath. He had been with our team of the show Vision of Asia and loved the world of South Asian American media. Uh, my dad loved to travel. He, uh, he went all around the country and he loved to tour parts of the world, Europe, South America, India, obviously. Um, and he really enjoyed uh, taking his family. Um, when he got the lung transplant, um, that to over the age of 70, the physician who, uh, who cleared him said that he's gonna, recommend, he's gonna talk about in his lectures to his students about how people over 70, 70 can get up, can get transplanted in this country. So that's a very moving tribute uh, to, uh, to dad. Uh, Rakashi is uh, one of the senior most uh, Kannadigas in our Kannada Kuta, settled in New York. He was uh, very helpful to the community and always outgoing to help others uh, in whatever uh, needs they had. Actually, uh, most of his life, whoever came across him, he has helped in one way or the other. Very soft at heart very soft-spoken and uh, he never uh, wanted any kind of uh, publicity or anything like that. He was always kind of behind the screens but the work he did for the community is really commanding. In uh, our community everybody knows him very well and as I said he's one of the most senior people around us. It is very unfortunate that we lost him. I pray Lord Almighty for Sadgati of the departed soul. Namaste. My name is Prem Nath. I'm a younger brother of uh, Shiva Prakash. We call him as Shamu. Uh, he was the only brother I know when I was growing up during my childhood. So he really took care of me. Even though we didn't fight, we didn't play, because we had a seven years of difference. But he's helped me for my homework, my school days. He wanted to give me bath, take me to doctor's appointment. He did everything. And uh, our relationship is, became stronger when I came here about 42 years ago. Uh, so he was helping me all along, even till now. You know, uh, he always supported me, gave me advice. We enjoyed going on vacations together. I always thank him for all the time that we have spent together. And uh, may God him, or give him peace. Thank you. Ashokji, uh, you and I both have worked with Prakashji for so many years. Um, I grew up with him working at the ITV studios. Um, he was very, uh, always smiling, very humble very caring. He uh, enjoyed meeting new people coming to the studio and the guests that you brought also on your programs. I, I know that uh, he's left his mark on this community with, I, with his work at ITV. I've known uh, Shamu Uncle um, in so many different capacities as an uncle, as a grandfather, uh, to my children uh, in work because I had the privilege of, of, of being um, involved with ITV for many years. And uh, he's not only seen me grow up, uh, but we've had the chance to work together in so many capacities. My wife, Kara, has always um, been a, you know, uh, 
inornate with, with, with his personality because he was always so welcoming and loving. And my children um, have always known him to be Shambhutata. And, um, you know, uh, today's passing, while sad, I think uh, brings us a sense of, uh, of, of, of contentment with the idea that he is now at peace and, uh, and the family is also. When I first joined ITV Gold, uh, Prakashji was, you know, I was fresh out of high school and Prakashji had so much of inspiration, so much of knowledge and all throughout, you know, he always taught me about the meaning of working hard because he worked hard, never letting a moment go to waste because he never did. So today as we're celebrating his life and legacy, I'm remembering all those great memories and praying that may his soul have a very peaceful transition from the material, from the material realm uh, to the supreme realm of the Almighty. Thank you very much, Prakashi, for all those great lessons and memories. Always will remember it and love you very much. Um, I've known him since 2013, and uh, I honestly believe he lived a really great life. If I, if I am like him, by the time I turn his age, I would, you know, I would feel truly blessed. Thank you. He was a very simple, humble, and a quiet man. Quiet doesn't necessarily mean he was not funny. He was very funny, but his jokes were to the point and had a great punchline. There are so many things we can talk about him, but one of the dearest things that I would remember is his respect for work and his respect for fellow human beings. He never discriminated or let's say disrespected anybody who worked um, with him or even let's say a garbage collector. One day we saw him like he was very, very thankful to the garbage collector when he lived there. And the other thing is um, he always joked that he sort of lived in the White House because he used to live upstairs and his job was literally downstairs for many years. And um, with that, I wish his, uh, I wish God to give him his soul, moksha. Thank you. I remember Pooja telling me that dad orders mango lussies only on special occasions. And what was the first thing that he ordered? A mango lussie. So then I knew that he, that he knew. And when I had first started asking him for permission to marry Pooja, even before I can complete the sentence, he, ra he raised his glass, the mango lassi, in the air in, a, in acceptance. And it was a done deal after that. And if I know he was here today, he would raise his mango lassi glass in front of all of us, thanking everyone for coming today. <laughs> It's time for a short break on Vision of Asia Voice of the Community. We'll be right back. In New York City, the Culture Tree collaborated with the India Center Foundation to bring together Color for India fundraising South Asian event at the Hudson Yards to raise funds for COVID relief in India. The event also celebrated Indian Festival of Colors Holi with many children, parents, community members. At the Hudson Yard, Color for India comprised of several culture performers, a puppet show and a dance workshop and created a wholesome learning fun experience for all. Here are the highlights. Hello everyone, my name is Anu Segal and I am the founder of The Culture Tree, which is a global organization that does cultural literacy and language education focused on South Asia. We have language classes in Hindi, Urdu, Punjabi and Gujarati all over the US. We also do cultural programming at museums, libraries and schools. The event will include our puppet show, Colors of Krishna's Love, which is all about friendship and the celebration of Holi. Then we will have a Bollywood dance performance and a dance workshop. And then following that, we will have our Dholi who will come in and we will play with Gulal, which is what you do on Holi. We will also have an art uh, activity for kids. So please join us in this fun. 
Um, I had so much fun at Color for India. And my favorite part was the dance performance because I do dance and it's really cool to see other dances. Hi, I'm Raul Bhavnani and I'm the president and founding director of the India Center Foundation here in New York. The India Center Foundation is a five-year-old nonprofit organization focused on arts and creativity in the Indian and South Asian diaspora and we're based here in Brooklyn, New York. You is navy in color. Okay? All right. How many colors in the American flag? How many colors? Who wants to say? Three. Three colors. Blue, red, and red, and white. Blue, red, and white. How many colors in Indian flags? So the Akanksha Education Fund um, over the past couple of weeks has been actively supporting um, our community uh, through vaccination uh, awareness as well as um, access to vaccines uh, in our community. As you know, vaccine hesitancy is a huge problem in India at this point in time. Uh, we've also been supporting our community through, uh, you know, that have suffered livelihood losses by providing direct cash transfers to these families um, as well as ration kits. Um, many of our students as well have, uh, you know, have to continue virtual learning. And so we're actively trying to um, get more tablets, um, you know, for some of our younger children uh, in India so that they can continue their virtual learning in a meaningful way. I had so much fun at Color for India. My favorite part was the dance moves. I like them because I think seeing dance moves is really inspiring. I think after seeing this, I might be an Indian dancer when I grow up. We know that the situation on the ground is dire. We're hearing from many friends and partners and organizations that we know that the situation, while somewhat better, is still in great need of our help and our support from the United States. So this is why we're particularly pleased to be working together with the Culture Tree and Akanksha to get critical support to those who need it on the ground in India. My name is Vabhav Haryani and I'm 16 years old. I've known about the Culture Tree for a while, and I've worked with them in the past. I've also tried to become more involved with the Kansha, as it's a charity my parents are, are ardent supporters of. When I heard that both of them were running Color for India here today, I was more than happy to come and help. Remote learning can be extremely difficult, as, it, as if it isn't done right, it can have lasting long-term impacts. Kids basically lose a year of school they can't get back. I can't imagine how hard it must be for kids in India to genuinely learn without access to devices, and this fundraiser is designed to help alleviate that. The situation in India is still dire, and many of you do not know how you can help. Simply keeping in contact with family and making sure that they're all right is the most important thing you can do. We are so excited to bring our puppet show Colors of Krishna's Love to Hudson Yards for the first time. And this is a story of Holi, but it has a very deep message about friendship and love. And here are our puppets. We have Radha, we have Krishna, and we have Sudama. So excited that Krishna is finally here at Hudson Yards. He was a little kid just like you. He and his best friend Radha would meet every day and play to their heart's content. Radha's other friends were often angry as she would not play for long with them. What do you think? Shall we become Radha's friends? Let's see if she'll play with us. I had so much fun at the Colors for India um, celebration. Uh, my favorite part was the was the puppet show because I thought that they did a really well. They did a really good job. I had so much fun in Color for India. Uh, the puppet show was amazingly planned out and stuff. If you want to donate to Akanksha, you can go to our website, theculturetree.com, and donate your money there, or you can go to Akanksha's website.
Welcome back. You are watching Vision of Asia Topics of the Week, bringing you major happenings on coronavirus, politics, culture and more. Let's now take a look at South Asian volunteers of the Edison Community Vaccine Help Group who are working around the clock to reach out to the senior community of the area for COVID-19 vaccinations. An effort started by Indian American Biro Patel, the group has secured COVID-19 vaccine appointment for several hundreds of township seniors, teachers, educational support staff, and those with certain conditions eligible per state guidelines. Here is the story. Thank you so much, ITV Gold, Parikh Media Worldwide. Thank you so much to Mayor Lanky, Township Council members, and uh, you know, I I said all of you guys thank you enough, right? So in the message, in this thing, but thanks to your family, this incredible children, all your spouses, family members, everyone who put up with all of you, right, during the vaccination appointments, is because of them you were able to stay up late in the night, wake up 4 a.m. in the morning and secure the appointments for 1,400 Edison residents. It's because of them. Now every, so, you know, again, thank you all so much. But thanks, more thanks to all your family members and every single dedication you've done. I'll just Hi, give... I'm Anita. I'm a resident of uh, Edison. And uh, I want to thank Biral for giving me this opportunity for serving the community. And each of the volunteers here, they have spent uh, countless hours in the midnight helping the community um, in getting uh, vaccination appointments. Um, initially, when the vaccination was uh, released, a lot of uh, older uh, people and immunocompromised people needed vaccinations. And uh, Biral immediately put a group of volunteers and he said, you know, let's get it done. So thank you very much to all the volunteers for the tremendous effort. And thank you, Biral. So uh, I would like to thank the Edison uh, Township and the Council and also Biral for uh, this wonderful opportunity for us to work as a volunteer. So actually, to be, to be frank, like, there are a lot of volunteer opportunities available around you, but then you need the right person to uh, uh, get the uh, right thing going on. And Biral is one expert in that, I would say. So thanks to Biral, and uh, I would like to thank him also for pulling me into this, because otherwise I would have just been doing something, some other work, but then he pulled me into this and uh, it gave a wonderful uh, opportunity for me to work on this. And uh, because of this uh, thing, I was able to interact with uh, other fellow residents here. Hi, my name is Nagesh. I am a resident of Edison. I would like to thank you, the Edison Township, Viral, and all the volunteers who helped in this vaccine drive. And also to my family who has supported me in this initiative by staying me, uh, waking me up and staying me late in the night to make sure that I get the vaccine appointments for all the uh, seniors and whoever are in need. So I'm, I'm thankful that I, I'm part of this initiative and I would like to thank Biral for pulling me this and I'm eagerly waiting for more opportunities. Thank you. My name is Neeraj Nagpal. Um, and I also want to thank uh, Birol. Um, it's such a proud feeling to be recognized today, but uh, quite honestly, uh, this was an opportunity that most of us uh, were looking for to kind of uh, give back to the community that we belong to, Edison. Uh, so such a wonderful community. Um, and uh, Birol had the foresight to bring everyone together uh, to get this initiative started so that the community can start to come back on its heels after a devastating pandemic. So we started with the first responders, education staff, um, and uh, seniors who needed the, the, the help the most, um, waking up early in the morning, uh, staying uh, late at night. You know, it's, uh, again, it's, uh, it's a testament to our family support, but really, uh, it, it's something that we were looking for to give back to the community, and we are happy to have found this uh, opportunity. I can speak for myself. This was a truly rewarding experience for us. My name is Roshan Yuvaraj, and I am a resident of Edison. 
I just want to thank Biral and I also want to thank my family for this once in a lifetime experience. My name is Verenia and uh, the pandemic hit everyone really hard and the vaccine was a chance for us to get back to our normal lives. But it was really hard to get a vaccine appointment and there were many people who wanted the vaccine. So I want to thank everyone uh, for helping uh, people who wanted the vaccine to actually get it and spending spending the time so that everyone could actually get it. Uh, hi, my name is Pallavi Karande Datta. I would like to thank Biril for this wonderful opportunity that he created for all of us. Thanks to uh, Township of Edison for recognizing the efforts, for bringing like-minded people uh, together to uh, give back. Um, it's a very... Um, it's a very proud moment, not just for me, but even for my children. Um, little emotional. Uh, when we do in front of your children, you are setting an example. So thank you again to each uh, one of them. Thank you. Um. Hi, I'm Jyoti. Thanks to Burrell and team for giving us the opportunity to volunteer. There are many senior citizens who are not so tech savvy. So we were helpful to get appointments for them. And also Stravan and others who used to notify us that a slot is available if you want. You can register for the people who are in queue. And we were on top of it and got the appointment. So thank you all of you for giving me the opportunity to volunteer. Hi, uh, this is uh, Shravan. I'm a resident of uh, Edison. Again, I think I'm grateful to be here today. Uh, with I, I felt like it's a family. I think uh, it uh, Biral put together as a quick team and we helped the society. And in, that, uh, in the need of the time, okay, Pretty much, I, that's all. Uh, thanks to uh, Edison Township. Was like, I was able to connect to a few of the seniors, and which I helped even one, uh, one family, I even helped uh, driving to their vaccination appointment. But the, the, the warmth or the, you know, the kindness you get from them, the kind words is even now I'm connected with them now, even this is gone. And they One of the things I want to recognize, especially about all of you, right? So today I spoke with someone who used to keep checking with me, whom we all secured appointments for. We There are so many people who keep in touch with us and reach out. But one of the person who had cancer, who could not get the radiation therapy because they needed to get through the vaccination appointments. So today they, I was chatting with them and they asked like, What's going to happen today? I say there's a council meeting and they will recognize our volunteers and give out some certificates. They said they don't need certificates. All your volunteers got a lot of blessings from 1,400 people and their families around the township and around the world, right? So that's more important than any of the certificates. Now, every I, a project starts with a beginning and an end. So beginning, like I said, inside Anita. Thank you so much for the idea. And we all would not have been here today should Shravan had not been inspired me to you know, uh, get uh, this program coordinated. So thank you so much, Shravan. And thank you all of you, all, every single contribution you did. Thank you so much. The 25th James Bond movie, No Time to Die, is set to be released on October 8th this year in the United States. From Albert Rob Broccoli's Eon production, the movie is directed by Kerry Joji Fukunaga with screenplay by Neil Purvis, Robert Wade, Fukunaga and Phoebe Waller-Bridge. The film features Daniel Craig in his fifth outing as the fictional character of James Bond. Here is more insight into the movie. Past isn't dead. James, fate draws us back together. Now your enemy is my enemy. Daniel Craig, Lashana Lynch, Leia Sedu, and our director, Kerry Fukunaga. Now, how are you guys, most importantly? And Anna and Lashana, um, how does it feel to be here in Jamaica joining the cast of Bond 25? Because you're the newbies. How do yeah. you feel? <laughs> <laughs> I feel I mean, fab. It's incredible being here. I think it's, there's no better location than this one to talk about the movie. And to, to me, finally work with Carrie and repeat with Daniel. So it's very exciting. Yeah. And you know what? There's worse places you could be than Jamaica, right? Exactly. I feel really happy because my family are from here. So it feels nice to coincide your heritage and your work at the same time. And then also work with a great filmmaker and a great cast. 
Well, we're really happy to have you here. We're going to catch up with the rest of you guys in a bit. But first, we have a very special message from a guy called Rami Malek, who sadly couldn't be here. Jealous one bit that you're all in the absolutely stunning setting of Ian Fleming's iconic Caribbean home, Golden Eye, on the island of Jamaica. No, not at all. I'm stuck here in New York in production, but I am very much looking forward to joining the whole cast and crew so very soon. And I promise you all, I will be making sure Mr. Bond does not have an easy ride of it in this, his 25th outing. I can't wait to see you all soon. Cheers. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid. Um, Daniel, how did that make you feel? Good. Just a little bit, right? Yeah. Just a bit. Yeah, Rami Malek. Um, now, look, we've had loads of questions come through from fans all over the globe uh, using the hashtag Bond25. Daniel, first question is for you. It's from Brian from the US. He says, how do you think the appeal of James Bond has lasted through the 25 movies? Um, hi, Brian. Um, I think consistency and um, the movies have been an event. I mean, I think for myself, I remember going to see them as a kid, and they were they were they were they were a moment. They, you know, the, the new Bond coming out was just incredibly exciting, and um, and uh, I, I, we've just tried uh, during my tenure, just tried to sort of continue that tradition of just making movies that stand out and are different from the other movies out there. Um, there's the there's the enduring. Um, um, a theme of, of, of Ian Fleming, who, who wrote all the books here. I mean, the, the book sort of set it up. And the early movies with Sean Connery were just just so amazing. I think it's just sort of, I think, I mean, so many things. So many things. Mm. Um, unfortunately, we've only got a little bit of time, so I'm going to get more as many questions in as I can. Um, hello to you, Steve. <laughs> no. yeah, well, that's what you were doing. You just said, she's just... <laughs> Look, lots of things to talk about. Um, Steve, on from Facebook, wanted to know, uh, Naomi, what was your first thought when you realised you were going to be in a Bond movie? Because this is oh, your third gosh. outing on um, 25, right? All I thought about was my family, actually. I just thought, oh, my God, they're going to go crazy. And they did go crazy. They threw a massive party, and it's been like a whole celebration. It's, it's not like... I just got the job. It's like the whole family has got the job, and they're all so excited about it. They're all huge Bond fans, so it means so much to all of us. Are you getting constant uh, WhatsApp messages from like your relatives, like, "Oh, I saw her." They're you all so excited <laughs> because it's like it's happening here. This, you know, I'm I'm Jamaican, so um, that's where my roots are from. So it's amazing that it's being launched here. It's so exciting. A beautiful homecoming. Yeah. Um, to Cornel uh, from the Netherlands, he wanted to know, and um, from all of you, um, which um, cast member is the most excited to be in Bond 25? <laughs> if, if it's a competition, at uh, Leah. <laughs> oh, okay, so I have to. Uh... <laughs> no, no, I have to sell myself. No, no, I'm very, uh, very happy to be back. And um, yeah, I can't wait to start. This wraps up our show with the topics of the week. Please send us your suggestions and get your voices and organization on our show. Email us on events at itvgold.com or follow us on Facebook at itvgold. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for free access to many of our popular shows. Thank you for joining us this morning from Queens, New York. This is Vision of Asia and I am Diti Lamba. Take care and be well and have a great rest of your day.